stuck between a rock and a hard place. Uh, we all know that at age and nobody wants to be there. But imagine being stuck in space. Now, that fear was unlocked quite recently for all of us when Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore were stuck in space for nine months extra than intended. Imagine what they were going through both physically and mentally. And who better to ask that uh, other than Scott Kelly, uh, American astronaut who spent 18 months cumulatively in space over four different missions. Scott, first of all, pleasure to have you here on CNN News 18. Thank you. Uh, you know, for us ordinary individuals, we can't even imagine it. But since you're the best brain to talk about it, I want you to detail what you think would have happened to both Sunita and Butch because these nine extra months they spent uh, from what was supposed to be a week were unintended and unplanned. While you go through a lot of training for something like this and you have your institutional knowledge and everything, what do you think they would have had to encounter? Well, they have both been uh, crew members on the space station before. Mm. Uh, so they had prior experience of having a long duration flight. Uh, they both had training prior mm. to this mission. So even though they were expecting to be up there for, I think, eight days mm. and wound up being there for nearly m nine months, they were very prepared for mm. it. And it was their job and their professionals. And even though I have not spoken to either of them mm. since they've returned, it seems to me like they handled it pretty well. And the space station, uh, everything else was prepared for these kind of eventualities, even a nine month uh, extra time for two extra persons on board? You know, the space station is a pretty capable facility. Mm. And when it was determined that they couldn't come home on the Boeing spacecraft, mm. uh, what was decided was to uh, launch another spacecraft uh, that launched, I believe, in September. Mm. And they normally would have had four people on that flight, mm. but they removed two of them. So they would have room to bring uh, Butch and Sonny mm. home. So in that case, uh, with regards to, like, resources and things, it's not like the space station needed... Uh, extra food, mm. uh, more oxygen, more water, more ability to just scrub the atmosphere of carbon dioxide because they still had the same number of planned crew members on board. Mm. What was different would be things like personal items, like clothing. Mm. But, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, often there are resupply vehicles going up there, and I'm sure they've sent the stuff that Butch and Sonny needed. Mm. You know, Scott, you were part of that historic twin study, uh, along with your brother, Mark, who's also mm -hmm. an American astronaut. And it gave us fascinating insights into the changes that the, phys uh, the body physically goes through. But I think the highlight of the study was, from what I could understand, is that you recovered fairly well after you were back on Earth, isn't it? Well, there was the science that, in many cases, was genetic mm -hmm. uh, research. There was... Uh, uh, research in like human behavior and performance. Mm. Um, so they did get interesting data on that. As far as my recovery though, mm. um, I've s flown in space four times, uh, eight days, 13 days, uh, 150 something. And then, uh, 340 was my last mission. So mm. progressively longer. Mm. And what I learned was that the longer you stay in space, the harder, harder it is to recover from it. Right. So on this last mission, that was 340 days. It probably took me about eight months to feel like I was back to normal. And what was those things that were not normal when you came back? Well, you know, immediately, uh, as you get back, I mean, gravity is a very strong mm. force. We, uh, our physiology, evolved with gravity in mind as an example our uh, you know our our heart and our whole cardiovascular system is designed to mm. fight gravity to mm. push the blood that nourishes our vital organs our brain uh, mm. in, in the direction opposite of gravity up towards our head so when you get to space and you don't have that force anymore our heart doesn't have to work as hard our vessels don't have to constrict as much mm. to keep that blood up to where it needs to be so it gets deconditioned yeah. um, in my case my heart lost 25 percent of its mass over the course of that uh, 300 like physical mass it yeah shrunk. it got 25 percent smaller yeah. So even though you do a lot of exercise, mm -hmm. it still doesn't replace the exercise it does every time it's, it Pumping beats blood, to yeah. force uh, the blood against gravity. So um, 
That was one of the most concerning things, I thought. But uh, you lose bone mass, you lose, lose muscle bone mass, mass. muscle mass. If you didn't do any exercise, you'd lose like 1% a month of yes. each of those. But yes. we exercise, but you mm. still, you lose that. Uh, but I would say, you know, the initial uh, symptoms are, when you get back are, are dizziness, nausea, um, because of my deconditioning of my cardiovascular system, my legs would swell up when I would stand up. Mm -hmm. um, I had hives and rashes anywhere my, my skin had touched. Once I got back, touched anything with any kind of pressure because mm -hmm. you just don't have that pressure anymore. And it mm -hmm. was almost like an allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. um, you're tired. Uh, when you're in space, uh, you don't also don't need as much blood volume. You don't need as much fluid because mm. the fluid is redistributed. Like now, like we have a lot of fluid in our legs because then you don't have that mm. uh, as much in space. So you lose that blood volume. But what you also lose is are the red blood cells. So mm. when you come back, you get the you get the volume back quickly when mm. you rehydrate yourself makes you give you an IV. Mm. What you don't get back are the red blood, blood cells. cells. That takes months. So you're, mm. you're tired. Um, and then I would say the last thing that uh, you get readapted to is just the, the pace of living back on Earth mm. in your normal life. When mm. you're on the space station, everything is kind of uh, scheduled for you mm. uh, there's a timeline it's kind of hard to get used to initially where mm. it's telling you what to do at uh, basically in five minute periods of time for in my case nearly a year mm. and then when I, you get home you really don't have that anymore <laughs> and it's kind of hard to get your sense of direction yeah. and motivation yeah did you spend like a week in bed once you came back no <laughs> no i'm not at all uh yeah, you have a pretty significant rehabilitation uh, mm. period mm. Uh, that goes on for, you know, a few months. You mm. have debriefs you have to do. You have medical exactly. tests. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't, uh, you don't get time off for a while. It's actually pretty exhausting when you get back. So when was the first time after, let's say, a longest trip, which was a year, that you feel like, okay, uh, now I can, you know, kind of just put that behind me and kind of... I, I don't know, rejuvenate and not think about it. And I don't really recall when you start getting time off. I would say it's probably somewhere between the two and three month period. Wow. But still the, the debriefs and the medical tests, they mm. go on for a while. Actually, I still do them sometimes. Mm. Uh, mm. All astronauts have an annual flight physical, but because my flight was particularly unique in the, in the duration, even though it's no longer the longest flight, mm. but at the time it was, mm. And because of the study with my brother and I, yeah. you know, for the rest of my life at times, I will do uh, science uh, data collection mm -hmm. for a lot of these studies. Are you still part of that study? Is it still yes. a long-term study mm -hmm. to examine yeah. the effects that you have long-term? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, this uh, last SpaceX mission with that flew over the poles, mm -hmm. the first flight with humans to go over the North and South Pole, mm. uh, on that mission, there was an experiment that actually had my brother and my cells on board on that, right. on that particular spacecraft. Again, to figure out what is the impact for someone who's been in space and someone who's not been in space for as long. Uh, I, or, I don't know this particular twins. experiment, what yeah. exactly it was hmm. investigating, but um, generally speaking, the experiment with my brother and I called the twin study hmm. used him as a control Versus. because... And, and it really had less to do with the fact that he was an astronaut and more to do with the fact that ha they had decades of data on mm. us already. Yes. And he could be a very good earthly um, baseline mm -hmm. uh, data person. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure there may be science-minded people or even science scientists watching this, and they'll say, well, you know, an experiment with only one – uh, sample mm -hmm. is not statistically significant, but mm -hmm. this is considered a longitudinal study where, you know, over time you're compared to yourself, mm -hmm. I'm compared to him, and you get more data points, which can make it statistically significant. Mm -hmm. Well, twin studies are by far the most interesting studies mm -hmm. in science, isn't it? Whether it's you versus your brother and yeah. the whole space aspect, or even on Earth, you know, how different people age and with the same genes, etc. So let me ask you, um, given what you went through, and it, it's a process to feel back 
uh, as yourself. What do you think is in store for both Sunita and uh, Butch right now? Um, you know, certainly, you know, their their mission was a little different than mm-hmm. mine uh, uh, because they were expecting to be up there eight days mm-hmm. and probably figured they could wind up there longer, but probably weren't thinking they'd be up there for nine months. Yeah. Um, but they're professionals. They were prepared. So I'm sure the homecoming was uh, uh, really exciting for mm-hmm. them, mm-hmm. maybe a little overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the, 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 the debriefs and the rehab are, are challenging, but, you know, they'll get through it. Mm-hmm. But tell me, uh, for our viewers watching, a lot of us, you know, look at astronauts and we are so fascinated, right? Uh, we want to be there, but then we wonder whether we can do this or not. Or even... Do we even want to do it? Mm-hmm. Because I'm sure there are sacrifices involved. So apart from the hard work that it takes for you to get there, uh, now that you've done your space days behind you, uh, what are the sacrifices that you had to make just to be in space that will never go away while you're, well, you're on Earth? You know, there's a lot of family sacrifices, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, you know, it's it's challenging on relationships mm-hmm. between spouses. It's challenging on relationship with relationships with kids. Because you you travel a lot for training, you're away a lot. Um, even when you're home, you're busy. Mm. Sometimes, even when you're not at work, you're busy studying, preparing, mm. getting ready uh, for the mission. So there are those challenges. There's physically though. What do you think you will yeah. never get back? Oh, my vision. Yeah. Uh, I I have uh, like. As an example, I have a distance correction mm. that uh, my my brother does not have, mm. and even though we're identical twins, so that seems to be due to the longer duration of time I spent in space. Because mm. in the absence of gravity, you do get, you know, your head swells yes. up. You feel like there's a lot of pressure in your head, and that mm. affects the physiology of your eyes and mm. can affect your vision. So I may not. Uh, that probably will never. Uh, get better unless I maybe get a lens replacement. Um, the other, you know, genetic changes, Mm -hmm. uh, gene expression that changed Mm -hmm. or changed as a result of your time in space. Um, now I don't know if those changes are good or bad. Mm -hmm. I probably maybe never find out, Mm -hmm. but, um, there are those kind of impacts as well. Uh, tell me, Scott, uh, we're there's living... also, though, the good thing, mm. and that's the perspective on the planet. Yeah. I mean, I think your perspective changes uh, when you get to see the Earth from space, see how, um, you know, the Earth was meant to 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 appear incredibly beautiful and peaceful, um, small, mm. I think, than, than we may think. It mm-hmm. seems like we are much more interconnected as humanity when you look at the earth from space. So you get those kind of changes in perspective as well. Certainly experiences uh, that none of us could actually feel unless you've been up there. But that brings me to the question. We're living in in a really exhilarating age of space exploration. But I want to ask you, um, why is space so important? I mean, why can't humanity be happy with earth? Well, I think we should be very happy with Earth, but understand uh, if we are able to utilize the space environment Mm. for certain things, it makes life on Earth better. I mean, this thing wouldn't work the same way if it wasn't for satellites in space. I mean, but why deep space? Why do we need to go to Mars? Why do why do we need to conquer Moon? Yeah, Um, we still have a lot to learn from going back to the moon, Mm. whether it's uh, the geology of the moon, how the moon evolved, where it came from. Also, the moon is a great place to learn to go to Mars. Mm. Um, Having said that, I am not a believer in this premise that we need Mars to be habitable as a uh, lifeboat uh, to go to if Mm. planet Earth is destroyed. I think no matter what we do to this planet and i hate to imagine what we could do which is pretty horrible but even that it would always be easier to live here than on a pl- on planet mars that mm-hmm. has no you know at no atmosphere no liquid water very few resources having said that i still am a big believer in going to mars because mm-hmm. there's so much we can get out of, out of going we can learn mm-hmm. what happened to mars so maybe we can help prevent uh that same thing happening to earth mm-hmm. 
the technology we develop to go to Mars is useful for um, improving life on Earth. There are um, reasons of exploration. I mean, it's mm -hmm. in our genetics that we are explorers. It's what we do. If we weren't explorers, we would have never, you know, humanity would have never ventured out of Africa, as sure. an example. And if all those things I said were wrong, if the only thing we got out of the investment of going to Mars that um, it would inspire children to study math and science mm -hmm. and become scientists and engineers and uh, people that want to do hard and challenging things, if that is the only thing we got out of going to Mars, then that would be worth every penny because – you know, those kids are not – all those kids – I mean, some of them will, but mm -hmm. all of them are not going to work in the space program. All of mm -hmm. them are not going to become astronauts, but they're going to do some incredibly important things, things that we really have challenges, problems to solve on Earth with regards to, like, climate change, mm -hmm. health care, um, you know, how do we responsibly use artificial intelligence, uh, robotics – there are so many things to, to learn that we will learn from um, going on these missions mm. that will absolutely improve life on Earth. And for that, every penny is worth the That's investment. Right. All right. On that note, Scott Kelly, thanks a lot for speaking to us. Uh, let's wait and see what the space field has in store for us. Certainly exciting times, both in terms of AI and in terms of space exploration. So both of them are going to collide at some time uh, in future. Thanks a lot for watching.